I've been with her through a uh, majority of my 20s, all of my 30s, and we're working on the rest of life together. I was about to murder my my um, landscaping company, bro. How, <laughs> how you come out to cut my grass when it's pouring cats and dogs out here, bro? <laughs> because now, guess what? If you don't, you're going to lose something that you find extremely valuable to you, whether it be time on your computer, te television time, toy time, or even going outside and having a good time with your friends. You will lose something, right? They're doing whatever they're doing, and you'll hear them like, hey, don't do that. But they'll go back to their conversation. And then it, but did I tell you don't do that? If you tell your child, don't do this, and they do it, and there's no consequences, mm then how do you not expect them to continue to do it? I sat in a job, bro, and watched the people in the black jackets with them, with them nice shiny badges on, come in there, scoop you up, and walk you out, and never see you again. I seen it happen. But if you fuck up, That's... You, you, get, you get one chance. <laughs> Positive energy and good vibrations from me to you. You have now tuned in to your perfect father's podcast. Yes, sir. Back to business. Back to another one. Back another to great another one. episode. I got my hat all cocked sideways. So, uh, so I can make sure I'm, you know what I mean? Keep my shit together. You know, you know what I mean? My man said last time I had my hat on, my 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 uh my uh my melanin, you know what I mean? The blackness. <laughs> my blackness was getting in the way a little bit. So I had to make sure, you know what I mean, you can see your boy. Uh but as usual. Positive energy and, and good vibrations. From me to you, this is your boy RJD, the imperfect gentleman, and your boy JP, the imperfect husband. And this is another dope episode of the Imperfect Fathers Podcast. What's good, good people? And what's good, my guy? Chilling, baby. How about you? Oh, man, I'm blessed. I am blessed, man. Another dope week. Yes, uh, sir. New accomplishments, new things have happened, new things popping. So, all the way around, man, brother happy. You know what I mean? How about yourself? Everything's going amazing. Another day on this earth. Yeah, yeah. We are alive. Our children are healthy. Yeah, that's a fact. And that's all that matters. Yo, when I, <laughs> shout out to the wife. Oh, birthday shout out. was this week. So oh, what? Shout out to her. Oh, shout out to the wife, man. Shout out to Nene, man. Happy birthday to you, lady. I didn't even know that. Yes, sir. That's what's up, man. So what you guys do? You guys getting into anything? You got anything planned for this week? This weekend? Just chill. Yeah, yeah. Spend the time. Get to a certain point in life where just chilling and staying home is what matters. That's that's <laughs> that's that QT, man. That quality time. That's a fact, bro. Well, I'm glad to hear that, man. I'm glad that she is celebrating another another year of life, brother. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I realized that me and my wife was talking the other day. I've been with her through a majority of my 20s, all of my 30s, and we're working on the rest of life together. You know what I'm saying? So. Well, you think back to yourself, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, all yeah. your 30s, yep, <laughs> majority of right. your 20s, if not all your 20s, right? When did y'all get together? Um, I was I was 28, I would think. Okay. Was Somewhere around. I was around, I was 26. 20, 20, 27? 20, okay. Somewhere around there. That's what's up, man. Yeah, going on 28. Think about how you different you are, and, t and times are different too since then. Was I? No, I was going on twenty seven. <laughs> He's still doing the math right now. <laughs> yeah, I was going on twenty seven, bro. You start having all sorts of brain farts. <laughs> welcome to welcome to this new phase of life, I'm right? Speaking of brain, brain fart, farts, let's not let's not violate. You know what I mean? Facts. Let's That's let's cool. talk to the father, man, before you get before you go further on this conversation, because yes, you know. We are uh, we we are we are sidetrack prone. Yep. <laughs> so with that being said, gracious and eternal Father, we thank you for another day. Uh, we're grateful for the opportunity to to turn habits around, turn things around. Just even in this moment, I took my hat off as we are praying right now. So this is a a, a a step up for your boy. So right now, God, we thank you for progress. We thank you for everything that we have in our lives, our families, our situations, even our circumstances that we are dealing with currently. We appreciate those because we know those. Are what's making us better. Those are what's making us better as men, fathers, husbands, and leaders. So for that, God, we thank you. And right now, God, we ask you to look over us as we go across these airways that we may say something to entertain, inspire, and also encourage a man to be the best version of himself 
but not just who he is right now, God, but for his lineage and his future to come. So right now, Father, we ask you all these things in the imagined name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Indeed, indeed. You know, you know the respect for the Almighty is big when you out here taking off your hat and you ain't got a cut. Yo, yo, you gangster. <laughs> you gangster, because uh like I, I ain't gonna hold you. You you a lot more gangster than I was because I was a little hesitant when I, my hair wasn't cut to take my to hat off. But you that man though. You I'm know about I mean? to get struck by lightning. <laughs> That ain't gonna be me. That ain't gonna be you. you know I mean? Probably gonna be me then, right? <laughs> you said it. Right? <laughs> Please don't. You know what I mean? Like I don't. I don't need it. I don't need to smoke. Literally. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't need it, man. But um, bro, this just uh, this just past week, bro. Yesterday, as a matter of fact, I uh, officially moved my wife completely into her new location, man. What's up? Shout yeah, out to her. Yeah. Shout out to my wife and her company, Blooming Pages, her business partner. Uh, man, I'm so proud of them. Like, it's, it's, it's amazing of how far they've come and how quick they've done it. You know what I'm saying? So to their their new beginnings and everything about their, from their business to the ground up, I am amazed and I'm grateful to say that. I am a part of it. You know what I'm saying? Just to say that, like, I've, I've watched it grow from literally an idea to now it's actually at a physical location. So yeah. I'm just amazed, bro, and I'm so proud of her. So, babe, I'm super-duper proud of you. Continue doing your thing. I love you, and I'm, I'm amazed at what you're doing right now, man. And, and also your business partner. You guys are by far amazing. Shout out to them. Yes, indeed. And anybody out there that that's looking, I'm about to give them a commercial right now in the podcast. If you have any children, young children, pre-K, kindergarten, first grade, I believe, I believe it's first through third, don't quote me. If you have any children that's having any issues with reading or math on their late grade level, look up Blooming Pages and they will they will do their, I'm talking about their thing. <laughs> they are very passionate about making sure that kids read and doing math on their grade level and higher. So shout them out. Look them up if you need those services. It's going to be somewhere down here. Absolutely. And also, we'll put it down in the description as well. I'll make sure I do that this week because sometimes I'll be forgetting about the description. <laughs> <laughs> Just keeping it real. But um, I definitely will put that in there this week because for sure, I'm happy about what they got going on, bro. Shout out to the wife. Shout out to them. Um. Uh, oh, so yeah, the reason I even said shout out to them, man, because yesterday was was work. It was it was a husband's work yesterday. Mm. So you called me yesterday and you was, you was like, yo, what are you doing? <laughs> like yeah, uh, yesterday I emptied out their storage unit. You know what I'm saying? They had they had a storage unit full of all their school supplies and a whole bunch of other knickknacks that teachers, women, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, accumulate that they don't want to get rid of for whatever reason. And um, yesterday I had my son with me doing it. <laughs> yeah, shout out to you, Josiah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he he made it even more interesting than what it was. Um, and the rain down here in South Florida is unforgiving, bro. Bro, it was crazy. <laughs> yo, yo, it rained so hard, it was bro. It crazy. I was about to murder my my um, landscaping company, bro. How, <laughs> how you come out to cut my grass when it's pouring cats and dogs out here, bro? They need that money, bro. <laughs> Homie got stuck in the damn mud, bro, because it was mud at that point. You come through with a lawnmower. What, what yeah. you think is yeah. gonna happen, Playboy? Yeah, nah. They 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 could they cared about that dollar. Something so one of their I, bills is due. He gonna he <laughs> gonna he gonna care for real from now on. I send him a whole Bible of text messages. Oh, okay, okay. It ain't gonna happen again. A nice, I can tell you that for sure. A nice it'll spirited be his last text. Time. You send him a nice spirited uh, text message. You get one chance. Mm. I like that. You there, get there's, one there's, chance. There's no three strikes. There's one. Oh. One and you that's it. You get one chance. That's it. You fuck up again. Oh, technically that's two. That's two. You give to people no. two chances. No, technically, no, no. it's one. You got that one opportunity to fix it. Oh, okay, so okay. I, I okay. hire you. That's not a chance. I'm I'm hiring somebody <laughs> because I I like what they. That's not giving you a chance. I I just hired you. Okay, okay. But if you fuck up, that's... you get you get one chance. <laughs> okay, I got I got it. I understood. Understood After that. that. That's it. You 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 do it again. <laughs> See you out there. See you later. It's like you you saw the 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 Mayweather fight. Which one? Uh, this past weekend, he nah, fought. Uh, I, I heard about it though. No, I I didn't he, see it. He fought. He Gotti. knocked him out, right? Uh, no, no, no. No, it, it went the it went the rounds. Okay, it wasn't a knockout fight. Um, but the ref was calling some uh, 
bullshit bunny punches. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were obvious right hooks. The ref got hired by Mayweather. So you know what happened? Mayweather took him out the ring. <laughs> he brought up another ref. You're going to disturb the fight the first four or five rounds. Wow. Because you feel that because you don't know because you don't know your your butthole from your ass, <laughs> then you get fired. Yo, but seeing damn. it seeing it from from the perspective as a as a boxer, right? You're supposed yeah. to you're supposed to respect the ref and the ref's cause and all that, right? But right. looking at it at, as as an employer's perspective, if you don't do the job right and yeah, your you job is disturbing yeah. the productivity of of what's supposed to happen, then you need to be let go. Yeah. No, nah, no, nah, that's that's business at the end of the day though. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just it's just a little crazy though, as like, you're the boxer and boss and you It was just... an exhibition fight. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. It wasn't on the line. You know what I mean? Okay. It wasn't sanctioned. It wasn't an exhibition fight. But that's fight. still though, that's still like that just shows you the power of Mayweather though. For you to be like, hold on. Get get out of here. You bring somebody you, else in you, here. You you had to see it. Like yeah? you had to see how it went down when he tried to when he tried to separate them because of a right hook, he he told him, the fuck him up. Get the fuck out the way. <laughs> like, it's, Normally the referees we, we find got the it power, funny. You know what I mean? We find it funny, but it, it really ain't funny, right? It now, really it, ain't funny. If he was that ref, it wouldn't be funny. Now, that's a fact. When you when you when you actually put the, the shoes on your feet and have to be that person in that moment. Listen, they, they have hard jobs. Ref have hard jobs, but referees you can't are... you you need to know you need to know your limitations. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You you can't come and 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 say you're gonna ref an NBA game when all you've done is little league. Yeah, that's a fact. That is a fact. Yeah, you gotta you gotta know but that's that's if any you've been job. A baseball though. ump, you can't come and ref basketball. You can't do that. <laughs> nah, you can't. You can't even do that yeah. whatsoever. So nah, you but gotta it, know your limitations. And, and and to that point, you're absolutely right, man. But like what you were saying earlier about not doing your job and having to be like sat down, that's that's life though, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're not performing well in something, you gotta move over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's it. That that's why, you know, at times I don't believe uh, most I don't believe in punishing. Mm. Right? I believe in discipline, right? Okay. When when you're in the workforce, when you're in the workforce, you don't get you don't get punished by your by your employer. No, you get brought into a room and told, hey, you're not performing. Right. You're going to get written up. Next True. time, you're out the door. True. So it, it, once you start treating your kids as growing adults, mm-hmm. right, because that's what they'll be at one point in their life, they'll look at things differently because they'll understand what it's going to take once they get out there into, that, into the real world. That's a fact. That is a fact, cause you don't uh, you 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 and your uh, employer, they definitely will bring you in that room. Oh yeah, <laughs> have a set down, and after they after they sit you down, they uh they slide that little paper to you. Oh, <laughs> sign me, here. Yeah. <laughs> let me let me let me sign yeah here. put your put your John Hancock on here right quick. So that's that's what life is about. Yeah. Life isn't about you. Ain't gonna get punished. There's no, no punishment. No, there's no punishment. No. There's there's disciplining and doing what's right. No, that, that well, hold on. That's not true, though. Let's talk about the punishment. When, okay. you get to, when you get to when you get to the punishment okay. of life, you don't want to be there. Oh, that's 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 different, though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like when you talk when you talking that, that's different. When you talk punishment, punishment. Yeah, that's different. Definitely. Yeah, because when you because when you we, we talk real life punishment, that we let's be let's be clear. We're talking we're, about we're talking jail. about we're talking, we're talking about, about prison. We're talking about um, uh, uh, law abiding citizens work a nine to five and yeah. they out here doing nothing crazy. No, no, no. But but like but to that to that point though, right? Like law abiding things go to jail every day. True. You know what I'm saying? You could, you could get a ticket, get a bro, I was sitting warrant, in, I was sitting in a job out on you Alaska. without you even knowing you have it. No, no, not even that. You could be at work doing what you think to be right and still be wrong. I've seen mm-hmm. it happen. I used to work in, in my last my last job, you know what I'm saying, keep it keep it discreet. I sat in a job, bro, and watched the people in the black jackets with them with them nice shiny badges on come in there, scoop you up, and walk you out, and we never see you again. I seen it happen, and that was it was somebody that you would a grandma like type. Why would you? But what would that, she do? That that 
that doesn't mean that they don't have a second life. But yeah, but but you saying law abiding citizens and from and from from the outside looking in, I don't know that per- okay. personally. You know what I'm yeah, saying? You're absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely right. Every day, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Somebody, right. we, somebody get we're, pulled. We're law abiding citizens, and and guarantee you right now. At not not saying I'm a drinks me or you, something can go wrong, and we can end up behind bars by accident, whatever it may have you. We're in Florida, so and we're all it all it takes huh? is 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 <laughs> an accident in the wrong part of town. Being and, and being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Oh. You know what I mean? So like that's why I say, like when they say that we come down, the punishment is like, nah, there they in real life, there's punishment. Yeah. And it's it, and it's like my mother always says, that second to take you get into trouble, but it's gonna take you a lifetime to get you, yourself you out of it. You just gotta bro. hope that all those conversations that yeah. you had with your children mm-hmm. will will actually take effect when thing when they're out there in the real world. Because at the end, all you could do is really have those conversations. What are you going to do? You're going to kill your kid? <laughs> Sometimes you want to. Sometimes you want to, but... <laughs> yeah, but... but right. How, how would you live if you did? Huh. Right. There, there's right. no prison cell that can <laughs> that can punish you worse than you're going to punish internally. yourself after you've done what you've right. done to your child. Right, internally. There's no... There's, no, there's nothing that's, that can that's happen. That's if you're a real, a real father or mother. Right, right. Correct, correct. But bro, like this is even bringing it up to the, the topic that you wanted to speak about, bro. Like the permissive parenting, right? Like, cause you said you spoke about it earlier about telling our kids one thing, right? And then like yeah. them not getting it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and you find yourself repeating and over and over again. So it's like, what do you do to combat that? Well, it, it, it's it, it's you can't speak to your child more than once. If you tell if you tell your child, don't do this. And they do it, and there's no consequences. Mm. Then how do you not expect them to continue to do it? Right. You're being permissive to their actions. Mm-hmm. Wow. And now, like, there's no, there's no urgency to listen to anything else that you say. And what ends up happening is that you end up blowing up, right? Because now you're like, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Now, all of a sudden, you got to get, you're at a point where, where, your cap is about to pop. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and now your child is paying for you not parenting right. Mm. Because at that point, it's not their fault, right? As parents, we're leaders. Mm-hmm. As parents, we're leaders. So if, if I tell you not to do this, and at the second time, uh, at the point of you not doing it, I don't get up. Take away whatever is distracting you and lead you into what I want you to do. I'm not parenting. Mm. True. So it's my fault mm-hmm. if I have to tell you twice. Correct. That's permissive parenting. Yeah. And we can't live by that. No. We can't. Because what ends up happening is that child will one day grow up and feel entitled. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> feel entitled and believe that they can do as, as they want. We're seeing Ooh. that now. Yeah. Why? Because we have... We have massive amount of parents that don't want to parent. Yeah. They want to be their kids' friends. Oh. oh, that's a fact. So what are we doing? Yeah, it's not about beating your child. No, but there must be consequences to actions. If you tell your child, "Don't do," you can't repeat. Don't do. You need to act right mm-hmm. after, and it's not beating the not beating their butt. Yeah. It's telling them, well, I told you not to do this. Give me your phone. Give me whatever is distracting you. And this is what I want you to do. Yeah. Sit down. Yeah. But see, that that comes with being a, a parent in real time and not being every place else. Like it's being it's being present. So it's like in an everyday household, you see parents where there's like, they're on the phone, right? They're doing whatever they're doing. And you'll hear them like, hey, don't do that. But they'll go back to their conversation. And then it did I tell you don't do that? That's still that's still our fault. Right. But and I'm saying what I'm saying is at that point is you have to stop your hold on. I'm gonna call Give you right me back. One second. Yeah, you know what I'll I'm saying? I'll call you right back. I'll call you right back. Because now it's time to like it's 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 time to like now be a parent, as you said. Because one thing that I don't have to do now to my children is put my hands on them. My daughter is now eight years old and my son is six turning seven. And I have not literally touched them in probably over two years. Because number one, the work has been done already. You dig what I'm saying? Like, 
if you don't start a certain kind of way, you can't end a certain kind of way. And I'm not I'm not the kind of parent where it's gonna I'm I'm, I'm gonna see something, let it fester, and then try to get it later. No, I see it, I address it now. Yes. Hold on. Didn't I say X Y Z? I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt if maybe you didn't hear me or I wasn't clear enough. But this is what you should be doing. Now, with that comes, yo, how many times should I speak to you? My children will tell you, once, Daddy, and I've already spoken to you that many times. What are we gonna do from here? Oh, we're gonna follow absolutely. Because now, guess what? If you don't, you're gonna lose something that you find extremely valuable to you, whether it be time on your computer. Television time, toy time, or even going outside and having a good time with your friends. You will lose something. Yep. Because at the end of the day, this is what life is about. You don't get blessed and privileges because based upon you just existing, you have to do things to get things. Yep. So if you're not following directives or orders, cool. Yep. You will you you will suffer somewhere else for it. Yep. I, I believe I believe in in teaching your children the same way that you train a puppy when they're small. Mm -hmm. Positive reinforcement. Mm -hmm. You grab your child and you tell him, you shouldn't be doing this. This is what I need you to do. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes you got to show it to them. You have to. Yeah. Sometimes no, you not sometimes. When they're, when they're little, that yeah, they oh, have yeah, no absolutely, understanding, absolutely. you can't expect. No. You can't expect a child with a sixteenth of your brain right. to have the comprehension of an adult. Right, right. And when you, if you do, then you're a child yourself. <laughs> yeah, seriously, seriously. But yo, the crazy part about that is like, if you don't catch yourself, you do it unintentionally. Oh yeah, because Be of, because of habit and the, and the quality of conversation and the ability of your child to conversate with you will throw you to a space where you oh oh you don't know that. Like for instance, my daughter, being that she's so articulate and things, and, and she's so like advanced in so many areas in life. I find myself like, yo, why are you doing that? You should know better than that. And then I find myself saying, no, Roderick, no, she's she eight shouldn't. years old. She's she eight. shouldn't know that. <laughs> you have to teach her that. And and even if she did, <clears throat> her attention span right. is this much. Right. So you got to repeat it. My mother always said, if I got to repeat myself until you 100 and I'm alive, I'm going to repeat myself. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I would tell my mother, I'm tired of these kids. And she'll go, Tired of what? You're just starting. <laughs> it's yo, the reality. Yo, though. never call yo fellas. Never call your moms complaining about your kids driving you crazy. Oh boy, never do that. They, they, they'll, <laughs> they'll come back to you and remind you of shit you never <laughs> you never remember happened. <laughs> oh, you remember when you, you were two? <laughs> or, or or they'll piss you off with the statement yep. you deserve it. Yep. Oh, what, what you thought was gonna happen? Oh, and you think you was any better? Mm. Or, or you gonna get all of that? You gonna get all that work? So whatever yep. you do, do not call your moms when your kids is pissing you off. Just swallow it, or, or call one of your homies. Do not call your moms, but <laughs> whatever you yep. do, from prior experience. Shout out to you too, Sharon. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what are we doing? Are, are are we gonna continue just just allowing these children to? Well, are we gonna continue? To allow these children to have children out here. That's basically where I want to go. Because because that's where the problem is at. It's it's children having children thinking that they can parent. And what ends up happening is their parents already did their job as parents, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fact. Now they have to do their job. Well, they thought they did their job as parents. Because if you have to parent being a grandparent, you ain't do your job. Well... Yeah, 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 nay. It, only because there, there's a there's you, a balance there, right? Yeah, because, you, because if it's once, because of dumb working, that's one. Right, and also too, you can parent all you want, right? And I, and this is what this is what we have to give leave, leave room for God at because you can parent all you want, but if that child has a certain journey or is hard headed, he's gonna do what he's gonna do outside of that. And the only yeah. reason I say that is because you're talking to the hard headed yeah, but it's, one, but it's. It's as a parent, it's your job to understand what that child is doing and what's their journey. And mold yourself to it, mm -hmm. right? In one house, you can have 10 kids and all 10 kids are going to be extremely different. Yeah, Opposite directions, absolutely. all of them. Yeah, absolutely. But if you decided to have 10 kids, 
it is your duty to divide yourself into 10. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. That every time you decide to create a life, you're responsible for that life. And you need to figure out what each one in those children require for them to be able to succeed. Absolutely. But you but you also, too, know, Jose, like, it's a certain place that your parents is going to, like, you, your hands, hands are off. You know what at I'm a, saying? At a certain age, yes. You know what I'm saying? And at then, a certain age. You can't, you can't then be responsible for their actions if it if it brings back because I've seen I've, I'm talking about I've seen people who who are like ten times more strict than on were on me my mother was on me on their children and they ended up way worse off. That's where we go back to what I was saying. You can just hope that everything you taught yeah is right, embedded right? right because at a at a certain age you're right word. fourteen and on if you didn't do your job yeah as yeah, a parent yeah word. From the age that they're born to the age of seven, yeah. you're fucked. Yeah, that's a fact. Because by the age of seven, they their brain it. is developed. They got it already. They are who they are yeah. by the age of seven. Yeah. So by the age of seven to 14, mm -hmm. all you're doing is guiding. Yeah. Because by the age of 14, they start making their own fucking decisions. Yeah, yeah. So if you didn't parent from the day they were born yeah. to the age of seven... Good luck. <laughs> Good fucking luck. That's where it comes into, yeah. well, because now it's no longer in their subconscious. Yeah. Now you're trying, you're trying to make up for that time that you were you were too busy finding everything cute mm -hmm. and laughing at all everything that they were doing when they were testing you yeah. to see how far they could get away with. Yeah. But that's And but, you were laughing at it. And but that goes back to the to the to the point of the children raising children like. If you can't be a parent if you're so much worried about what your children feel emotionally about you. Oh, yeah. Like, so I just watched a video on Instagram and it was hilarious because the dude was using an announcer voice. He's like, this just in. I'm a parent and I'm getting the silent treatment because I'm parenting currently. <laughs> Listen, parents, you're going to get the silent treatment at times. You must not give a damn. And it, he's telling the truth, the truth. And he showed the video that the girl the was truth. sitting there with the meme mug on and she gave him the side eye. But it's so true because it's like, it, now is not the time to be their friend. Nope. Like now as an adult, oh, me and my mother are the best of friends. Exactly. I, me and my mom's like, we Just, we go have a good time and we are the best social partners and life partners as as, as it's going to be. Yep. But before this time and phase of my life, this, it wasn't that sweet between us. Yep. Parenting is the most unappreciated job. Oh. Shit. The most unappreciated job. So it's not your duty no. to be their friend. No. You need to know that you going to be their worst enemy while they kids. They yeah. going to hate you. Yeah, but that's Not 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 when they kids, when they're teenagers. Yeah. They going to hate you. But you know what? It's your duty to prepare them to know that you know that they going to hate you and you don't yeah. give a fuck. Yo, honestly, and it's like it's it's the living out of life looking at the moment I call it. And it's like let them know like yo, you've been there and you've seen this yep. already. So like what I've been doing and it's helping me in my relationship with both my kids is like, yo, I remember your age. You know what I'm saying? Now at this time in life, because three years ago I couldn't tell them that. I don't nobody remembers five and six. But around eight, nine, and ten, I'm, I, I have memories. You know what I'm saying? So the feelings that she's going through right now of walking around the house trying to figure out the things she should be doing or shouldn't be doing, I can now relate. And she's like, oh wow, dad, that you that yeah. thought process I have, and you had that? So now she comes and asks me, Yo, Dad, what do you do when you feel this 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 thing or you have this thought? You know what I'm saying? Now yeah. those things are coming about yeah. because she knows I can relate to her. You know what I'm saying? It's not it's not that, oh, my dad is trying to come at me or he's talking to me. Yeah. He's literally like, oh, shoot, he was here before. Yeah. You know what I'm so saying? When when you you recall me saying that that I treat the raising of a child um the same thing, well, the teaching of a child the same way you you teach a puppy. Yeah, yeah. Right. The first six months of a puppy are crucial. Mm -hmm. Right? Because the first six months of a puppy will determine if you are their ambition or if they're going to seek something else to be what, what their motivator, right? So it's either you're their motivator or they'll find something else to be their motivator and you're just the, the pack leader, right. right? Especially when it comes, especially when it comes to, to, to American Staffordshire's pit bulls, the, the terriers, right? Okay. They have that, that, well, yeah, you're here, but I have my own brain. I'm going to do as I want, right? Because I'm curious like that. But if you don't become their motivation, 
they'll seek it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And if you introduce too much people to them in their first six months, other people, that, that, that adrenaline that they get from meeting people will become their attention, mm-hmm. will become their motivation. And then at that point, it's extremely difficult for you to unbreak that. Same thing with a child. Same thing with a child. If if your child, the first years of their life, you're not their motivation, mm. sooner or later you will stop being their motivation. But it comes with you planting the right seed. Mm-hmm. Right? You can't expect that if your child is six, seven years old, eight years old, and he's speaking to you, but meanwhile you're on the phone scrolling while your child is talking to you, and you're not giving them the the attention that that the attention and respect that they require. What makes you think that they're gonna respect you once they, they have their own mind and they're able to go on their own? And they're gonna give you the same thing that you showed that them. you've given them, and they're gonna think nothing of it. They're gonna give you the same thing you've given them. Absolutely. It's like it's like planting it's like planting a mango tree and expecting that shit to have apples. Yeah, no, nah, you're absolutely crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, seriously. But like this is why I say like yo, we can't we can't not do the work early. This is why like bro, like I'm not nowhere near where I want to be money-wise. Like I I'm, I'm a thousandaire, right? I want to be a multimillionaire. We're working to get oh, there. Yo. But if like <laughs> and this is this is this is a, a a testament to what you want in life. When I had children and when I when I started this journey out to getting married and having children, Money and status weren't a care to me. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing to me was for me to be able to be there. For the children. You understand what yep. I'm saying? So everything that now life has brought me to the space and time that I, I am where I am, nothing can pull me from it. I am where I want to be because I can see about my kids when I need to see about them. And I'm, I'm in their lives from the day they was born up until this day. I, I, I was bragging to one of my friends and I was realizing, like, yo, you brag different when you're in a different category. My new brag is like my kids don't know too many days without me. You know what I mean? Like yeah. th- their brain can't process yeah. me not being around. And for that, listen, I'm him. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Like I brag about like yo, listen, my kids don't know days without their father. And the days that I'm not there around, like when I'm traveling or something, oh trust me, they call in every minute they can. What? Yes. My daughter's first time not having me in the house was oh this daddy's this this house is daddy misses him like. This house has a daddy. Where is he? Oh. And my wife was da- hysterically laughing because how she said it, but she knows. Oh. Like, all she knows is me being home and being present in her life. So there's not going to be a time where, well, well, daddy wasn't there. No, 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 no. And and all that time vested is why I'm going to make sure, like, no, 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 no. We we have this bond. What's going on? Yep. It just even yesterday, she came in the office after, when I was dead tired after working all day, she comes in the office and she says to me and closes the door. She goes, Dad, how are you feeling? I said, Daddy's tired. She said, okay. Well, I'm going to make sure that Joe that Joe does his homework. I looked at her. I, I, I recall I recall all of that. Bro. I'm going through it with some. <laughs> yo, I looked at her. Oh. And like I literally was just like, yo, thank you, baby girl. I gave her a kiss and she walked out and a tear rolled down my eye because I would say to myself, Yo, time well spent, yep. bro. Yep. And one thing I'm gonna tell you is that understand that when she gets when she gets to a specific when she gets to a certain age, she gets into her teenage years, mm-hmm. years there's gonna be things that she's not gonna be able to talk to you about. Of course, of course, of course. that she's gonna be afraid to talk to you about because of disappointment. Mm-hmm. And it's our duty to understand that and not take it personal. Yeah. As yeah. as fathers. Yeah. Because we will. Yeah. I tell you by experience. Yeah, yeah, We will yeah. take it personal. No, absolutely. Oh, why, why, why doesn't she want to talk to me about it? Yeah. But if, but the way that that my wife explained it is, well, there's things that she can only talk to me about. Yeah, absolutely. And that's right. Yeah. You're absolutely, absolutely right. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. But we are one. So it's your duty to have that conversation with me after. Yeah, yeah. Because I wouldn't hide anything about what she's told me from you. Yeah. Even if I just add at the end, don't tell her that that I told you. Mm-hmm. I just need you to know X, Y, and Z is yeah. happening. No, but that's but that's the partnership. Because the same way y'all laid and created her, you dig what I'm saying? Y'all laid down together and created her. There was no division in that. And I'm not saying that 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 my wife doesn't come to me no, with no, no, everything no. that's being said. It's more of 
understanding that it happens, right? Bro, this is why I tell people like we have this 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 the world's saying this big thing and it's and so true that a woman can't raise a a boy to be a man. We gotta also reverse that. Yep. A man can't raise a daughter to be a woman. It's impossible. So this is why I say like, yo, yes, there are so many ways that families uh, 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 the dynamics of families that, that should not be broken and the reason they should not be broken is because every part of it means something different to each dynamic. Meaning, you could be the best father in the world, Jose, which which you which you are, second to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> right? But no matter how great of a dad you are, it can never compensate for what they need in a yeah. mother. So I, I'm hearing so many fathers and, and and single mothers and single fathers saying, "Well, I'm a great father. I don't. He don't need his mother. Or, or I'm a great mother. He don't need his father. Damn that! That's not that, true. That should not be your mindset. Because it's not that should true. Should not be your mindset. Because the the truth of the matter is, no matter how good you are as yep. a mother or a father, it never compensates and, and, for and the and opposite and side. And stats do show that that single father homes raise better children than single mother homes. Right. Right. But that does not take away from the fact that a household needs a mother as it needs a father. Yo, bro, and let me tell y'all something right now. As a man who lives it and I breathe it, the woman is the true nucleus of the household, bro. We, we, when it's we, a true woman. Yeah, absolutely. But 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 the, the true nucleus is like, is yeah. we, we laugh and joke yeah. about it, but we sat at the dinner table, and I said it before in that episode, was that... When you sit at the dinner table and you realize that everybody either came in her or came out of her, Yo. it's it's the true definition of nucleus, right? Like everything about what she is produces everything that we need inside of the family. If if you don't have if you don't have that person next to you, that as a king, yeah, that's pushing you along. If you don't have that queen next to you, you won't be a successful king. Nah, you can't be. Like, how good you be? You, yeah, people always talk about a king being a king. Do you know a king can't crown himself? Hmm. Right? You you have never heard a king saying, oh, let me take my crown and crown myself king. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. You have to be crowned king by someone. Somebody has to give you that. You understand what I'm no. saying? So if the person that you, or the person that you would is not crowning you king, are you really a king? Are you really a king? That's are a you question really you gotta ask yourself. Are you really a king? Oh. <laughs> so now let's talk about some the next topic. Cause okay. uh this one right here is uh it was brought to me at uh to one of my from one of my guys and um one of my new clients, so shout out to him for just signing on. Um the question is, and the topic is, are you sleeping next to your dream killer? Mm. That goes into, are you really a king? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you see how I did that? <laughs> Yo, wait, but, you, but before really we get into king? that, like, comment, and subscribe right Please. quick. Please do us that favor. Please. You guys have been definitely doing numbers and keep that going. So like, comment, subscribe, and also share it out with somebody else that might want to hear us holler and, and, and kick this stuff that we're kicking right now. So. Are you sleeping? Next to your dream killer. Next to your dream killer. <laughs> I want you to explain that a little bit just in case they didn't get it. Okay, okay. So, uh, Tuesday of this week, I was uh, introduced to a new young man into my program, and we began to talk, right? And we we know that there are ebbs and flows of life and energy and things that happen throughout our day, but he was on a major high that day when, when, I, when he signed up. And you could just tell when somebody's excited about life and they just have this thing and they're just rambling off all the things that they want to do and get done and all those things. And that energy was infectious that day. So I, I took note on it, right? So it was like, that was a Tuesday. So we had a follow-up session, which was Thursday, which is uh, yesterday. Um, and he says to me, what's up, coach? With this energy that wasn't his. So, you know, first impression is last impression. So I'm saying to myself, who the hell is this? You know, like, what, ha what happened, dog? Like, where's that normal pop? What? Well, you know, it's one of them days. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? I've I've had some of those. You know what I'm saying? We so, all have. Come on, right? We all have. So I, we, we went down the path of letting them know, like, it's not a bad day. It's a bad moment, right? And then we get back to the genesis. Where was that moment at, right? Where did that moment come from to cause you to have this feeling all day long, 
What does that come from? So after sitting there for a few minutes, he goes back. And it goes back to not just the day, but it goes back two days. Because after he signed up with me on that Tuesday, he went home and spoke to his girlfriend and told him about all the things he's going to do because he now is a coach and he's going to do all these things. And he started rambling off about, you know what I'm saying, his, 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 his excitement and his, spirit, his spirited thoughts and judgments. And the energy and, and, and the, the rebuttal that he got from her snatched his energy, like killed his dreams. He didn't say exactly what was said? Um, or not exactly, but around the realm of what was said? It was more so like, where'd you get that from? Who you, who you been hanging around with? Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, so, so who is this new friend? Who, what's her name? You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of, oh, you don't have it. You didn't go to school for that. Just everything, everything he brought up was shot down. You know what I'm saying? So, and it was more so around him starting, starting over in another area of his life, like business wise. And you know what I'm saying? Just restarting uh, 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 the next phase of his life. And one thing I had to explain to him is that when you're with somebody who knows you from where you've been, if they're not okay with learning the new you, they're going to do their damnedest to keep you where they know you to be at. Because it's not about you progressing for you. It's about you leaving them without who they thought they had. It's their own limitations and their own fears. Right. So now he... It was so hard for him to even begin to have the conversation with me because he felt as if though like what I was saying was like, I guess going against his girl at the time. And you know, anybody speaks against your lady, initially you're like defensive. Yes. Yes. But I had to show him, explain to him, bro, like, are you sure this is the one you want to spend your life with? Because if she can crush those kind of dreams that you have in a matter of moments with no regard and it can last you almost 24, 48 hours to still be in that same space. What are we talking about? D does she know how passionate you were about these things? Well, yeah. So what happens when, did, when, you, when you speak back? When you, you know what I'm saying? When you say this is what, you're, what you want to do. It's mocked. So it's like now mm -hmm. he loses faith in, even in his own dream because it's like, yo, the one person that I'm coming to bring it home to to kind of kindle that fire with about this idea, this thought process is blowing it out. Does she have any dreams? Because if the person you're speaking to is a person of dreams, they'll completely understand where you're coming from. Right. But if the person that you're speaking to has no dreams or ambition... Right. Or 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 want to grow in any sort way, sort of manner. Yeah. Um. Then that person's fears. It they can't never see you past what you currently are because that it's a reflection of them. Bro, and that's a dangerous place to be in, bro. Like, and like once again, I always go back to to my situation and say to myself, bro. Like, even when I didn't believe in me, my wife believed in me. So it's, it's so hard for me to just fathom the thought process of having someone in your corner that's not really in, in your corner. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, that's tough. That's rough, man. That's tough. That's really tough. It's really tough. And and you you need to figure out what it is that you want from life. Because yeah. if, if this person... All right. How much is this person worth to you? Mm. Right? Because mm. it... it how much is she worth to you? Man, if I this person... Good, great, great question. <laughs> if this person... If you can't see yourself upbringing your family with this person... And 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 let's take it to that, right? Let's take it to that point. Because I, I like where this, that point is going. How much is this person worth to you that you're willing to also sacrifice the dream of your children? Because mm. if she can do that to you while you guys have no kids... Wow. What will she do to her kids when they come to her and say, Mommy, I want to be an artist. Oof. Mommy, I want to do nails. Mommy, I want to do makeup. Mm. Mommy, I want to be a singer. Yeah. Mommy, I want to be a basketball player. Well, there's two million people who play basketball a year. Right, 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 right. And only a hundred get selected. <laughs> you, you, you see where I'm going yeah, with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very deflating. Very deflating. Man. So if you can do that to, to who you claim to love, 
your husband. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do to your kids? Yeah. Who you also claim to love. Bro. And yeah. came out of you. When so you, give you, you have a lot more power, right? Uh, you, you, have, you have complete power. You have influence. Out of, you have the only influence. You know what I'm saying? And like, to this young man, it's like, I left off the statement was, be grateful she's your girl and not your wife. Because there's still a time to change this, right? There's still time to either correct uh, correct uh, uh, the path, mm -hmm. the thought process, or it's also time to correct your path and your decision making to move on. And if she really loves him, if she really loves him, love can make you adjust absolutely and learn absolutely. from your significant other. And but and even uh, let's 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 give her a little bit of grace too in this. She probably has fears. Yes. Right. It, Obviously, that comes from a place of fear. Whether it been whether whether it be with him from previous or even previous relationships or her mother and father relationship, their dynamics. It was, it was probably done to her, right? And you she know, feels that this is what's the precursor, normal. right? And it, and it might happen again. It might transparent yep. uh, transpire again. And for that, he has to be willing to teach. Definitely. You dig what I'm saying? For that, you got to have the willing to say, you know what, sweetheart. I'm going to show you right now because I, I see you don't believe it. I understand that there's a reason why you don't, but I'm going to do my best to show you and teach you not only just that what I'm, I'm, I'm going to do what I'm saying I'm going to do, but to also believe in me, yep. right? Like you got to be willing to teach your woman to believe in you. If, if she's not in that space where she doesn't have no belief because for whatever reason, whether it be life's choices before you or even something you've done prior, right? In, yep. in, 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 in prior times, you now have to go into that space of, yo, I'm going to teach you that, I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. Yep. Or I'm going to be who I said I'm going to be. And that's where it comes into how much is this person worth to you? Yeah. Because now it's an investment. It's an yeah. investment of time. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to have to work it. That's, that's, yep. that's work. Yep. That's real work. And, you, and, and time and energy, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's going to be a lot of draining moments that you're going to you're gonna think to yourself like, <laughs> Jesus, I, I regret doing this. Yo. But if you really love this person, mm -hmm. you're going to have to push through. Yeah. Until sooner or later, they understand yeah. where you're coming from. Yeah. What's important to you. Because if, if, if they can't respect what's important to you, then there's, there's, no, there's no way for you to grow. Mm -hmm. Because what's important to you needs to, it needs to be a priority, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm going to make you a priority as my significant other, then you need to also prioritize what's important to me. Mm -hmm. And the order of things is God didn't give Adam... E first. Mm, we're taking it to the Bible. Huh? Yeah, we're going to go there. Gonna because, go there. I, because you know what's so crazy is that we get so caught up, and I, I'm, I'm going to bring this to because God just brought this to my memory just now, is that we get so caught up in getting a woman to go along with us mm -hmm. and, and follow our lead, right? But she can't follow your lead if you're not going nowhere. Meaning, your purpose in life, which was God given before she got there, has to be your driving force and matter more than she does initially, right? Because if you don't have a driving force for you initially, what are you going after for her to follow it? Because if you're standing still, what is she? where is she going? And we can wonder why she's nagging. Because she's not going nowhere. Y'all are stagnant. Mm -hmm. But if you're moving towards something, if you have a goal, you have a destination that you're working towards, guess what? It's her duty as a woman to be able to see, witness. Yep. Do I want to go along with this? Yep. He's obviously focused on going this way. Do I want to go along with this? Yep. It, now it doesn't matter if if if, if she's following along. Oh well, I, what is she feeling? It doesn't matter at this point. Are you gonna follow me to what I gotta go to? Are you seeing my vision? And if not, peace. We ha I have no problems with that. No. And if none. you allow your significant other not to see your vision, then you're both blind. And it's, it's, not, it's not her fault. It's not her fault. Because you're not focused on your vision, your goal. That, that, like back to the Bible, God made Eve last. He created everything. And then he put Adam to sleep to make Eve. So that means, you mean to tell me he gave Adam his responsibilities, his work, his duties, obligations before he gave him his woman? So in all actuality, she was never his top priority 
to begin with. His first duty was to do what? Make sure the land was right. Yep. Do his job. Focus on what he had to focus on. And once he had everything established, in those first six days, I think it was, yeah, bust her open, bust her, go sleep. Get your rest. Now I'm going to make you somebody. She came about after he did his work. So we can't be so worried about oh, well, her feeling her thought process and the initial factor. You got to be worried about what your purpose is and is she willing to follow you to your purpose. And 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 taking it to the Bible because of it going the other way and and Adam thinking about her feelings and thought process, he went and bit the apple. Now, so, so now I'm ready for some comic relief. <laughs> ready for this? <laughs> Oh, this, this is great. This is great. This, 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 this could be, uh, 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 am I the only one? Am I the only one that, got, that kind of gives Adam a little grace in that space? Let me tell you why. Okay. Because as men, right, when our woman walks up to us, naturally, right, they have our full attention. <laughs> right? When they, when they come in the room, they oh, hi, babe. You, you just like, you're kind of like mesmerized by them, right? <laughs> and they're what? They're fully dressed. <laughs> My man Adam. Imagine him being butt naked. <laughs> you see where I'm going, right? Give me that fucking apple. Give me that fucking apple right now. Arr, you understand what I'm saying? Yo, she walked up. You got to a him. peach too? Yo, she walked up to him butt booty naked, had the bazooms out, right? And was like, here. Adam was like, Damn. Okay. All right. But, but Gus. No, nah, here. nah, nah, don't do anything. I, I ain't even tripping. We'll talk to him later. Yo, we gonna get struck by lightning <laughs> over this one, bro. Nah, but look, am I the only one that thinks that Adam should have a little bit of grace and space because she had them things out? And like, you know what I'm saying? Like, my wife, she'd be like, yo, uh, I, I tell her all the time, like, yo, babe, I give Adam a little grace because she don't. My wife don't yeah. give Eve no grace because when it's time for that time of the month, she hates Eve. You hear me? <laughs> she can't. Why does she eat the apple? But so it's like I always tell her, like, you you got to give her a little grace too. I, I don't know why, but I be I be wanting to give her grace <laughs> because I need help giving Adam a little grace because it's like, yo, babe, when you walk in the room and your things is out, I'm not listening to nothing else. You understand what I'm saying? Like. You tell me to eat something, I might just grab it and eat it. It, it, it might be a poison app. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? So, fellas, if your lady right now walked into the room with an apple with her things out, are you going to eat the <laughs> apple or not? Are you going to eat that apple? <laughs> and if you say no, you a fucking liar. I'm calling ultimate cap, okay? <laughs> Straight cap. <laughs> Word is bomb, man. But You will eat the apple, yo, the banana, yo, the listen. pear. Yo, listen. Whatever she got in her hand for you to Facts. eat. Especially put in your mouth. So I don't know I don't know if Eve, you know what I'm saying? We don't know if Eve was like, come here, baby. Put this in your mouth. You know what I'm saying? Because you know when, when, when you're, you be like, huh? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so you, you, we don't know if she put the apple in his mouth. You know what I'm saying? She she could have cut it up or something. You know what I'm saying? We don't know. We don't know. She could have oh, seduced him man. and everything else. So to, to the power of the woman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Give my man Adam some grace. <laughs> that's that's all I'm saying, oh, man. Oh, man. I, I'll leave you with the grace. But by the Bible's words, he ain't know she was naked until he bit the apple. Right, right. <laughs> You had to put that in there, right? You had I had to, to throw it in there just, yeah. just so that, you know. But yo, you, you just killed my case for the grace, though. Gosh. So you know what I'm saying? I, I don't just, know. I ain't just, giving no grace out here. You just killed my case for the grace for Adam, man. But, you know. What, what I do know is that my wife come through that door yeah. with an apple. Bucket neck. Yeah, yeah. On, on site. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, she come I'm in eating. here. That's it. And then the case is missed. No questions asked. Next thing you know, we out here like Romeo and Juliet. Yo, listen, spooky. word up. We'll come back and, well, you know how they say, uh, 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 three hours later. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like this. Yo, listen, you ready to eat? <laughs> word up. But listen, we're coming down to the last couple of minutes, man. But now I, I, I want to talk about uh, uh, something that uh, a friend of mine brought to my attention. And I want to say that I'm, I'm not all the way through the episode, but... I've watched enough and we had a few conversations that I want to bring into the podcast, bro, is that what do you think about men, quote unquote, high value men, with the thought process of it's okay to just run around and create as many children as they desire because they have the means to, quote unquote, provide for them? What do you, what do you feel 
about that as as a as a man, as a father and a husband? What do you? How do you look at that behavior? Well, we we've seen the outcome to that. Mm. Where where we, where we, we seen we, that? At? We've seen the outcome to that. Um, how many how many of these uh, uh example little Wayne's kids? Mm. The majority of them probably he doesn't even know. Mm. Wow. Because he has like how many kids? He says that he takes care of all his kids, but it, you 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 can look you can look through through different people that have five, six, seven kids. Who gets the attention? The one that's in the current household. Yeah. The rest don't. Right, and you you can say you're taking care of them financially, but that's but not completely taken care. It's not. There's no attention, right? There's there's no sympathy. There's no passion. There's when, no when that child needs to needs to grow into being a man. Who's teaching them? Right. Because that child isn't with you. The child spends uh, uh, six days out the week with, with with his mother. Five days out the week with his mother. Yeah. So you're gonna tell me that you're teaching him how to be a man in two days? No, it's impossible. And like you can't teach anything, right? You like, can't. Like let's 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 get this understood. Like teaching is a skill, right? That you do intentionally. When you raise children, it's based off of your actions. Mm -hmm. They're just watching. They're you, just watching, yep. right? They're they're not. You're not sitting there. They're not learning. Yep. They're not taking notes, jotting. Well, my so, dad did this this morning. He took he brushed his teeth twenty two times, and so you're normalizing. You're normalizing having a thousand kids in the street. That as long as you're giving money, it's fine. That's insane to me. That is insane. And and the way this is coming from right now is uh, an episode of Nick Cannon's podcast. Uh, with the, the, the I believe uh, Cheyenne, Cheyenne and, something was her name. And you know what? I think using Little Wayne as an example is a bit it, it's it's a bit of an outreach because I really don't know a hundred percent. I do know that he has a lot of kids. Yeah, yeah, a lot of kids. Yeah, yeah. And but, Nick, Nick Cannon is right there with him, bro. But how how much he's doing for his children? I I can't say a hundred percent per se because from what I've read, he does by he does well by his kids. But going back to what we're speaking, is is your meaning of doing well, giving money to the mother of the child? And, and when you say doing well, like, so you can't replace moments. You can't. Right? You can't all, replace moments. All you're giving moments. is your child the ability to say that you're his father because you're famous. And what is that going to do? Think about this. The moment you have in your Rolodex of memories of, Something you've seen with Nini, with the two kids, right? Mm -hmm. A moment that transpired, first steps, right? Mm -hmm. Can your money have that memory for you, that moment Not for all. you? So the reason I'm saying this is because it doesn't matter what you can provide financially, right? If you're not going to be there... You're creating a hole in that child's yes. life, regardless of who you are. And I'm not saying this to go out and Nick Cannon, uh, 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 Cam Newton, and, uh, uh, Little Wayne, anyone, any stars who we know have multiple kids. But what I'm saying is that you can't just be okay with going, starting families with women and creating children with gaps in their lives. Because I can say one thing. If you have 10 children with the woman that you're with, cool. Cool. You're in the household yep. with those 10. Yep. But if you have 10 children by 10 different women, you're creating holes in some of those children's lives. Trauma. Lots of I don't care how much money you throw at it. I don't know how I don't care how many visits you go on, how many vacations you take them on. If you are not in their life on a day-to-day -day basis, being with them, being a father, being there every step of the way. You're creating a hole in their life. You're creating trauma later on that yep. they're gonna have to heal from. Now, if you if you have if you have a 50 bedroom mansion and you have all your baby mamas living in the same house, then that's a whole different situation, right? That's that's some little Wayne type of shit right there, right? Nah, but like listen, listen, pray to God, <laughs> pray to God for that man. Okay. <laughs> then, then they, they what? They sister wives? Yo. No, but and and, and and to those people that have that lifestyle, more and power to more you. More power to you, buddy. More power to you. You have more patience and more a lot of things than I probably ever wanted in my life. Okay, Sheesh. Uh, just, dealing with one is more than enough. And just <laughs> shit. 
More than is one enough, okay? More, <laughs> more, one is way more than enough, okay? So I just, I just say that, fellas, no matter what your financial status is, right? Remember that if you had your father in your life, remember the moments that you had him in there, had him for. Yeah. And if you didn't have him in your life, remember all the moments you didn't have him and you missed him and you wanted him there. Before you go out here to re recreate lives, because yep. all you're going to do is re recreate the pain that you felt. Yep. And it's as a man, you can't tell me that you're just okay with, oh yeah, I'm willing to just give pain to my children. Like, it's something not right. Like, yep. you don't want to inflict the same pains, right? That's that's some of our problems right now. We're trying to make sure some our kids don't feel the majority of things that we felt to yep. their demise. To their demise. You dig what I'm saying? Yep. But the truth is. Those generational curses, that that those traumas that you don't have to pass on, don't. And don't do it based upon your quote unquote financial status yep. or your ability to yep. quote unquote financially provide for them. Because like I said, your dollars don't stretch for emotions. I saw I saw a post of of a kid that was telling that was telling his father that he's never been there and and his father said, um, well, I I've I've Giving, I've given you everything you've needed. I've sent, um, I took care of you. I supported you in everything that 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 you ever needed or wanted. And he said to him, "It wasn't about your money. Mm. Where were you? It was about <coughs> you being there when I needed you." Mm. Yeah. Do you do you know what that means, bro? Being there when they need you. That goes so much further than anything else, bro. And if you tell me that, if you tell him that picking up his phone when he needs you is good enough, then come on, bro. What are we doing? And I take pride in saying this. In every board meeting doing? I've ever sat in, any company that I've ever worked for, and anybody I've ever done business with, they all will tell you, if my family calls me, I wouldn't give a fuck what I'm doing. You hear me? I'm out of there. Because I, I witnessed a boss of mine at one point in time in my life sitting in a meeting. His phone ring, bro. It says, son, he didn't even pick it up. I'm in a meeting. I even mentioned to him, yo, boss, your, your phone's ringing. I'm in the middle of a meeting. All right. In that moment, I knew I wasn't going to work with him too much longer. In that moment, I knew my time here is almost over. Because there's no way I'm going to work for a man that has an attitude towards his family. Period. Because I don't stand on that. Because right now, in, in the middle of this podcast, po right now, right now, if Cassie or the kids call me, see you later, my nigga. I'm out of here. I stand on business when it comes to that. Because my family is something I created and I take pride in that. And when you take pride in something, you give it your all. So yeah. I don't know how you would take pride in spreading your seed all across the world and, and take pride in each one of those. Yeah, also, that that's uh it's it's a little um I, I see how that can go both anyway, right? Because also, like I get what you're saying. I wouldn't either, because if if you right, if you have a child and you're in a meeting, you're at work, right? If your child is calling you, if you've done your job correctly, your child will only call you if it's important. True. True. But True. if you have not but but I said all the same time. But you but you as a father, you don't know if that's an emergency on that call or not. See, my thing was to say was, give me a second. Yo, is it, you all right? All right, cool. Everything's good. I'll right, I'll call you I, back in a second. I feel you completely. You, you understand and what I'm that's, saying? That's how I would direct it. Also, that's how I would do it. At also. least check. But if if that child is an entitled child. Oh yeah, well. With, you, you see where yeah, I'm going with yeah, that? Yeah, no, nah, but but that's that's a whole you, other. You, you see where I'm parent. going with yeah, that? Yeah, so yeah. so that's what I mean. Yeah. How, how about if to that person, they're going through a situation where that child is always calling them mm. because they're entitled, yeah, or because it the wife him, finds him, out, Dad. Him, him and the mother are separated. <laughs> him and the mother are separated, and this is how you 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 see yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Like it can go, it can go, and it can be a thousand of things, right? But to your point, yes, I would pick up the phone. Is everything okay? Okay, I'll call you back because I'm in a meeting. That's it. Sit. See about see about yours. 
But that also comes, that also comes with your teaching is what I'm saying, yeah, right? Yeah. Because my kids have seen me in the middle of something, of something important at work, them being here in the house and my mother will call me and I'll pick up. I'm in the middle of a meeting. I'll put the meeting on mute and I'll pick up. Hey, my, everything is all right? Oh yeah, okay, I'm in the middle of a meeting. I'll call you right back. Right. So they've seen that. Right. So now they understand, well, when Papi's in the middle of work, we can't call him unless it's important. Yeah. And that's, that goes to the point of establishing that relationship with your child. Definitely. You dig what I'm saying? Definitely. Because my thing is like, my kids are going to call me based upon their need. My kids are not going to just call me because they want to talk to me all day. Yo, your kids don't want to talk to you all day, B. Think about it. Depends. Nah, just <laughs> yeah. all right. Let me let me holler at, let me let me holler at my niece right quick. Nah, my, my, my son could be fucking annoying sometimes. <laughs> now, they are shadows. Like yesterday, my son was literally in the crack of my ass all day yesterday because be, my daddy. But you know what? I'm gonna tell you what. I gotta take advantage of every minute that I get of him being annoying. You know, annoying it's almost over, bro. It's, it's almost it's out almost the door. It's almost over. Yeah. It's almost out the door. The day that that he finds that one girl or whatever that attention calls his attention is it's a wrap. And it's you know, a wrap. You know what else is a wrap too, my brother? This episode. Oh. <laughs> or because we get to, I to take that. a sip of the cup. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Because uh, actually, I gotta. Uh, um, we coming down to that that point, and also I gotta go pick up the wife and the, and the kids right now. So, you see, you see what he just did there. Yeah, yeah. You see how that fell into what he was just saying? Literally, because we are our imperfect fathers. Yep. You dig what I'm saying? Like, we don't just sit on this podcast and talk about things that don't pertain to us or we don't actually live in real time. Yep. And the thing that we do among around this podcast proves that we're just that. Yep. You dig what I'm saying? So, like, I'm never going to hide what's going on in the background. And you guys, if you follow me on Instagram, as you should be doing, rjd.imperfectgentleman, you should be, you'll see me on a every, every day, day basis. Like, I'm with my family. I'm in the mud with them. I'm going every single day to take care of all their needs and to serve my family as a servant leader. So, yep. That's the only reason I sit here and wear this, this title with pride and perfect father because literally, I'm not perfect, but I promise you, I'm a father that's working at being perfect. Yep. And like he was just saying, you know, if you guys are not following us on the gram, follow us. Yours is, once again... RJD dot and perfect gentleman. And mine's is at D-J-L-U-N-A-T-I-K-O. Give us that follow. Yes, indeed. We appreciate you. So before we get up out of here, Jose, what you got for them, man? Let's be more attentive as to what we're doing with our kids, how we're um, disciplining our kids, not over, not having to over speak and them not believing that there's that there are not actions to their that they're not consequences to the, to their actions. Right. Um, sooner or later, they're going to grow up. They're going to go step out into the world and they will have a rude awakening immediately how this world is full of nothing but consequences. Um, let's be a bit more, more on top of our kids when it comes to that. Man, I second that. Uh, don't just wait until it's time to blow up on your children. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Stand on business, as the kids say these days. And be serious. Like, your kids should know when you're playing and when you're not playing. They should be aligned. Worry about being more of a parent than a friend. Because later on, when it's time to be a friend, you ain't got to worry about being a parent. That's something that I'm living in real time. Shout out mm -hmm. to you, Sharon. Because when it was time for her to parent me and get me to the space where I am now, she, she held no punches. And she didn't care about me being her friend. She cared about me developing into yep. being a man. And now, because of that, we have a phenomenal relationship. So keep that in mind. And fellas, the last thing I want to say to you is this. Make sure that you're not laying next to your dream killer. Do your best to, to, to cancel the relationship if that's the case. Because your vision, your dreams should be more important than she is initially. Because when you get to the stage of our life that we're in now, yes, she takes precedence over things in your life, especially things that you want to do. She then takes precedent. But before that moment in time in your life that you walk down that aisle, up until that moment, your dreams and your purpose on this earth should be first and foremost. And if she's not willing to get behind you on that, she's not willing to be with you. So 
and to second what what he was saying on the first part, um, if you spend your youth, your child's youth years being their friend, you will spend your grandparents' years being a parent. Ooh, whack! You don't want to be there doing that, <laughs> yo, man. So, fellas, as always. And women out there, thank you so much for following us. Thank you so much for subscribing, hitting that button. And thank you so much for the time you spent with us right now. Because as always, you could have been doing anything else for the last hour and change, but you decided to spend it with us. And for that, we're extremely grateful. So thank you once again. Continue to like, comment, and subscribe and share this content out with other husbands, fathers, couples, and people that you want to see be better in their all perspective ways of life. And with that being said, Jose, as always, to the men out there. They're just dads, bro. But to your family, you're the world. Don't let that go over your head. And until we see you guys in these podcast streets again, be good to yourself and the ones around you. And if you can't be good to the ones around you, that's all right. Just get those people from around you. Yo, this is your boy, RJD, the Imperfect Gentleman, and... Your boy, JP, the Imperfect Husband. And this has been another dope episode of the Imperfect Fathers Podcast. Y'all be blessed, because we will. Peace. Another one. Another.